And we begin at the state capitol where all is quiet now that the 2015 legislative session has come to a close. And as you're about to see, this year's session turned out to be a very good one for Georgia agriculture. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. And this house is adjourned. Sign it down. And with that, another 40 days worth of votes, meetings, and a few heated debates along the way was in the books. Relief? Joy? Pure exhaustion, maybe? How about all the above? You just kind of say, okay, it's time to go back to the house, go to bed, get a little bit of rest, and, and get back to real life then from, from being up here for three months away from your family and, and your friends back home. It just, it's nice, just a nice feeling of relief. In what Governor Nathan Deal called a productive session, Lawmakers agreed on a total state spending budget of $21.5 billion, with a portion of that going to ag programs throughout the state. Among them, the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab in Tifton, which was allocated $1.5 million. And that's a real plus. That's the second year, so that's $3 million total. I know that diagnostic lab is very important to people all across the state, but especially the producers in South Georgia and if you look at the budget we since our state revenues have increased somewhat we were able to put in some more county agent positions we were able to increase extended day extended year pay for agriculture education teachers as well as put some new young farmer positions into the budget so I think all that is very positive for agriculture in our state. Transportation, another key issue this legislative session, with much of the focus on the Port of Savannah expansion and the anticipated increased movement of goods both to and from the port. Although the $900 million spending bill allows for the much needed repair of highways and bridges, travel industry experts have already voiced their concern regarding an excise tax of 26 cents per gallon on gasoline and 29 cents on diesel. Most people in the state of Georgia don't even fill up once a week, much less, you know, three and four times a week. Now, I understand us in agriculture, during the time that we're gathering and planting, we may be burning a little more fuel, but we will see an increase in traffic from that port expansion, which is good for us. But on the other hand, it presents the other problem from a transportation standpoint, not only for congestion relief, but from the damage on the roads. You know, our heavier trucks are what that, that's, that's what does the damage to us. So we've, we've really tried to look at that, anticipating that that's coming on. That's why we have a sense of urgency now to move forward with this and get something done. This year's session, very kind to the white-tailed deer, now the official state mammal of Georgia. Feral hogs, on the other hand, not so lucky. House Bill 475, also known as the Feral Hog Control Act, gives property owners more flexibility in controlling feral hogs both on their property and leased farmland. It also requires a permit to be obtained before transporting any live feral swine. The biggest problem with the hogs, the way they got spread, is people, people uh, catching them and turning them loose in, in a different area where there wasn't any to start with so, that, so they can hunt them on that place. And these things multiply three months, three weeks, and three days is another litter on the ground, and in about seven months, those pigs are having pigs. So it, it's a multiplying problem that we got to get a handle on. This year's session also resulted in changes to the state's Soil and Water Conservation Commission. Under House Bill 397, the commission now shifts from a standalone agency to one overseen by the Department of Agriculture. Ultimately, where we came to in an agreement is that it remains an independent agency administratively attached with the Department of Ag. It will still operate the way it always has, with an independent board making the decisions for anything that they do. Um, by doing the administratively attaching piece, we're able to save a considerable amount of money that was going for overhead, basically the you know payroll, those type op operations and functions as a standalone then by administratively attaching, allowing it to still operate independently, we were able to capture some of those savings for those type functions and actually push that, those funds that we were able to save on the administrative side down into the local district. All right, so a lot of information to absorb. Nonetheless, if you'd like to read more on the bills and passages that took place during this legislative session, just log on to the link you see there on your screen. That is gfb.org slash 
reports 2015.